I know you you've used your own singing. Yeah. You've manipulated that for Invader Zim. Yeah. So I'm putting together some suites of Invader Zim music. Um, basically, music in score order from every episode, and I'm preparing it for YouTube. So my daughter oh, wow. was helping me out with that today. So if you go onto my Instagram right now today on my stories, you'd be able to see that. So for whatever reason, I had to do a lot of singing on Invader Zim. <laughs> and um, I enjoyed pitching my voice up either, you know, up an octave or two or down an octave. Because um, I'm not really a great singer. But that works for the yeah. show. For those who haven't seen Invader Zim, yeah. your, your singing adds a level of dementedness that I think fits perfectly in with that series. Yeah, and I wish that show had been SAG because I would have made a lot of money. <laughs> Well, that, that's true. So you don't get paid any extra for that, huh? Well, no, just like royalties for the, the music itself. But Oh, okay. All right. So every every few months, there's a five cent check coming in the mail. <laughs> well, like every quarter, it's my BMI ASCAP. So can. Uh, uh, can is Canada. What's well, CSAC? Well, I know for the, for the Enter the Florpus movie, which for those who have not watched Invader Zim Enter the Florpus, it is available yeah. on Netflix. And it's really beautifully animated. Um, I, I would say that the, the piece is nice part, part of the film is a very good example of what you've done with your voice. Well, so I'll tell you about Peace is Nice. That was a children's choir. So I did not sing on Peace is Nice. Oh, you, okay. Your voice is not on Peace is Nice. No, it's actually a children's choir. I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, well, I thought you were singing with them or something. I don't know. No, I, no, I think I like on a demo I did. But no, you, you don't hear my voice. So it's actually my kids with some other kids of a friend of mine who's a musician. And then I, I, in my scoring stage, I had them stand in different places so that we'd get this really full stereo sound. And we just multi-tracked like, I don't know, six, six seven times. So it sounds like really big. Yeah, it does. It's, it sounds like a full. full and record. then I realized um, after the session that I had... Um, I had written out the lyrics wrong for one of the sessions because I had two sessions, one with just my kids and then one with the other kids. And I think I said, peace is nice, chicken and rice or something. I, I mixed it up a little bit. So I was like, oh, my God, they, they sing it all like half wrong. And But you know what? You couldn't even tell. And then I like chopped off a little bit of the beginning. So it took off some of the syllables and it's OK. So but now everybody knows because I'm telling the story. Yeah, but no one's going to go <laughs> Uh, but the funny thing about that too is um ricky who's the voice of Gur, we we did a session with him over at nickelodeon for him to sing because Gur sing starts singing pieces nice in the beginning and he sings it really bad like to like sort of eight bit music so i had to do like a really bad rendition of pieces nice before it really becomes nice And um, because they pitch his voice up in the sessions, we had to do this complicated calculation of like, well, we had to pitch my music down in order for him to sing to it with his normal voice so that when they pitch it up, it would fit it would fit the 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 right music. <laughs> and <laughs> we're all scratching our heads. And then um, just yeah, he doesn't have great pitch. So he would <laughs> We just did over and over of um, different takes, and it was just, it was, it was probably the highlight of scoring the show. Was just sitting in that session, trying to get Ricky to to sing "Pieces Nice" as, well, as you're good enough so that it was bad. <laughs> I mean, it's appropriate that it was a highlight because it's a major part of the film. It's kind of a big climax moment. Yeah, of and um, just to, just so you know, too, Jonan uh, sang the. They, they gave me this terrible recording. I don't know why, but I think they manipulated the audio so that it was sort of non-pitched. But he he came up with the melody, and then I just I took the melody and did all the arrangements on it. Um, and my first version was it sounded like out of Home Alone, like John Williams' Home Alone. Yeah, I want to post that at some point because it sounds just really beautiful and yeah like Christmassy and he's like no 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 I don't want it beautiful and Christmassy I want it like a, a big anthem 
One so inspiring, the children will have no choice but to peace harder. Like these kids are singing in the middle of like a baseball anthem, you know, baseball field, and it's this, this big triumphant anthem -y kind of vibe. So <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I guess I missed missed, <laughs> missed that. <laughs> Would you say over over the years of working with Jonah, though, that you eventually developed more of a shorthand? Well, I, I think we did by the end of Invader Zim for sure. But then, you know, 19 years went by. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was we definitely um, started back up where we left off. 